King's X there, we were born to be loved. Uh, I should just apologise, and if anyone's watching on the webcam, you might just see this kind of startled bunny look where I uh, am quite literally winging it here behind a desk with a few faders and knobs on. Uh, but it seems to be going fairly well so far. What do you think, Rich? Well, we're eight minutes in. No surprises yet. But no, no. It's early. It is early, and we did forget to put the fader up properly uh, to begin with. But uh, we're not <laughs> going to do that again. Let's have a bit of Led Zeppelin. Bit of Led Zeppelin there, and his Dream Theater. I found it finally. Bear with us; we're kind of new to this. Wahre Stimme des Rock und Metal, Total Rock. Rich, uh, you fancy starting again? You made a bit of a balls up at the start, didn't you? A we? very good idea. Have you worked out how to use that desk yet, mate? Not really. I'll right. Be, I'll be totally honest with you. Shall uh, we start over then? Why not? Um, introduce yourself, Richard. Who are you? I'm Richard Brooke from the band Headspace. Uh-huh. And you are? Uh, Adam Whiteman from Headspace. Hello, Adam. Um, I play in Ozzy Osbourne's band, so some people might have seen, uh, seen me around with that over the summer. Um... We're going to just play some stuff. Fancy a bit of Slipknot. Oh, I love a track that ends with a seaside. Or just anything that passes water. So, you can still write in our email address here in the studio is headspacelive at gmail.com. If you think that we're going to be able to reply, please think again, because uh, we'd love to hear what you're saying, but uh, I'm struggling with three pages at the minute. So, uh, <laughs> right, uh, a bit of Foo Fighters, maybe? Or as Jules Holland likes to introduce them, Foo Fighters. burning there from Foo Fighters from their latest album Wasting Light an album interestingly they went back to basics and recorded the whole thing on two inch tape can you believe it in these days of Pro Tools they went back to that also produced by Butch Vig who was the producer of Nevermind thanks for that Rich Uh, we're going to try a little um, competition after some ads the Total Rock merch store is open The true voice of rock and metal. Total Rock. Hey, uh, Rich, it's time for our first feature. Very excited. Yes, this is called Progage de Trois. It's basically three tracks that we'll play back to back. And uh, they have one musician or artist that links all the tracks. Not necessarily a prog track, but uh, loosely prog linked. And we also liked the name, Progage de Trois. It's very continental. Indeed, indeed. Uh, all you have to do is guess who it is that links them. Email us at headspacelive at gmail.com and uh, we can ridicule you all, you all on air and... Uh, yeah. bit harsh, Mr. Wakeman? Uh, well, harsh, but fair. Here's the first track. So, as I say, you've got to uh, try and uh, link a musician to all three tracks. It's a- oh, that appears to be not working. So we're going to go straight in for the second track. Here we go. Um, just imagine the rest of that David Barry track, and this is the second track. As Richard
Richard so eloquently put it uh, just then while that was playing is it does go on a bit that one a little bit a little bit uh, well I'll tell you who the musician is that links all those tracks after this Pressure and Time the stunning new album from Rival Sons So what we had there just before the break was uh, Life on Mars, released on David Barry's 1971 Hunky Dory album, although that was in fact a live version because uh, for some reason it didn't play, but uh, followed by Sabra Cadabra by Black Sabbath from the Sabbath Bloody Sabbath album released in December 73. And the final track, Heart of the Sunrise, uh, which as Rich said does go on a bit, uh, from Yes's Fragile album. Uh, that creates the final link between all three, the same keyboard player, someone I've heard so much about I feel I almost know like uh, part of the family. Here's of course Mr. Rick Wakeman. Uh, Rich, do we have a winner? We do indeed. We had a lot of entries into that. Thank you for your um, answers, everybody, at headspacelive at gmail.com. First right answer out the bag was Mr. Leonard Hodge from Brasyth in Fife in Scotland. Well done, Leonard. We are sending you absolutely nothing. <laughs> Okay, so we have had a little bit of a rethink about the prize for that uh, competition there. Um, Leonard, just to let you know, Adam has recently had a haircut and lost a foot and a half, I, I believe, have of your hair. I did a foot and a half. Uh, it wasn't just a really bad hairdresser uh, and cutting my hair with a scythe and took one leg off. He did actually cut a foot and a half off of my hair. So we're going to put that in a jiffy bag and uh, as long as it doesn't get intercepted by some kind of strange post office uh, people, then you should receive that in two to three working days. Um, <laughs> I think that's only fair. Absolutely. So, um, you can work that hair into a nice pillow or perhaps put it on eBay. We had Spitfall there from uh, Pain of Salvation and Tom Sawyer, of course, from Rush. Uh, Going to come back in a few minutes' time. Awaken the times. It's a massive... ...la voce del rock e del metal. Total rock. I have a question for you, Rich. Go on. Uh, my mum used to say to me, you're living a bit high on the hoof, and I never really knew what she was talking about. High on the about. hoof? No. Any no, ideas? No ideas on that one, my friend. I could ask her now, but she won't be listening. <laughs> Probably not. Pretty pretty sure. I actually I used to play with Travis, a band called Travis, and uh, uh, we played at Live Eight, so the biggest gig I've ever played. One point two billion people watching, tuned in around the world. Mm-hmm. And uh, I phoned her up straight afterwards. I was pretty excited and said, uh, "So, Rich, uh, Ma, um, what did you think? You know, did you did you did you like the show?" She said, "I didn't watch it. I went to Morrison's because it was quiet. You know, fantastic." <laughs> buy anything nice? Uh, I don't know, just a weekly shop, I think. Uh, do your mum ever used to say anything that confused you as a child? Uh, not really confused me. She did used to say, please stop stealing from me, that's my pension. That that got a bit tiring after a while, so uh, wow. I left. <laughs> thing we have to fear is fear itself i'd also like to add clowns onto that list uh, and i'd like to add the inland revenue here's a track now uh, from ozzy osbourne i co-wrote this track with him and producer kevin Cherker last year this is let it die from the scream album <laughs> I managed to find a few minutes on the Aussie tour recently, have a chat to someone I thought would be a good candidate for the show. Uh, I caught up with him at London's Royal Garden Hotel. (laughs) 
joined here by guitar legend. You may know him from his band Firewind, and the chances are, if you read any kind of music magazines, you'll have seen him on the front cover. Joining the ranks of some of the finest guitar players in the world, who have stood alongside the Prince of Darkness himself, Mr. Ozzy Osbourne. Welcome, Gus G. <laughs> Gus, how are you? I'm fine, how are you, man? I'm pretty good, man. I mean, we've been pretty busy over the last 18 months. How's it been for you? Oh, yeah. It's been great. It's, um, it's an amazing experience being on tour with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the singer's not bad. Oh, yeah, he's not. No, no, it's great. No, it's you know we've been all over the world and uh, played to um, amazing crowds. It's been the best tour I've done. So um, how's it different from other tours? Well, first of all, the venues change. <laughs> <laughs> Usually I do the toilet tours, but uh, now I actually had a chance to do the uh, to play arenas. It's you know it's just like higher standard of things. You know it's uh, you know the conditions are much better and um, the audience are the audiences are really you know playing really big places and obviously the feeling of just being on stage with uh, with Ozzy Osbourne you know standing next to a legend like that were you were, were you sort of pinching yourself the first time that uh, oh, you, yeah. like the first show was BlizzCon wasn't it BlizzCon in, yeah that's what we did in Anaheim two years ago were you kind of looking to your side because I remember the first gig I did with him I kept looking over thinking that I was on stage with the tribute band I was like it can't possibly be <laughs> next to the real <laughs> Ozzy Osbourne exactly <laughs> Okay, now the paranoid cover is coming up anytime, but oh no, it's Ozzy singing it. <laughs> yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been mistaken for you a few times. For some reason, I don't know. I don't think we look that similar. No. But just the other day outside the hotel, I, <laughs> somebody said to me, uh, you know, they talked to me for 10 minutes and then said, so how was it playing with Arch Enemy? And I said, you do realise I'm not Gus Jr. <laughs> and they just looked at me and just went, yeah. Well, I'm not Gus Jr. I didn't play with Arch Enemy. And they're like, yeah. But so, tell us how was it anyways? Well, that's what, I mean, I just gave them one of your guitar picks that I've got in my oh, that's bag. great. What was the other one? That, uh, uh, you've come a long way doing this Dream Evil or something. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I'm beginning to wonder whether or not I just slept through a, a section of my career. Maybe I did play with these bands. <laughs> Probably you did. I must have slept as well. <laughs> yeah, that yeah. <laughs> so you've never been mistaken for me? No. Not yet. No, not yet. That's kind of a bummer because I should have some story to tell you about that too, <laughs> right? <laughs> we go for, for the next time. And some of these festivals we, we've been doing over the summer, I noticed you've been on with Firewind. Uh, yeah. Was that kind of a preconceived idea of trying to get on some festivals or was it? did they just fall in the right place at the right time? Well, our agent was shopping around for some gigs in the summer anyways, so talking to promoters and um, some of these promoters that were booking Aussie, they were like, yeah, we'd love to have Firewind on as well. So that's how it happened. Right, we're at this point in the show <laughs> that we kick it off this new star feature uh, called Masters of Your Own Reality. This is an insight into how much fame and fortune have actually hampered your ability to stay unaffected by the rich trappings that surround a successful musician, such as yourself. I would not expect anything less from you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, we gathered five questions supplied by Mensa, professors from King's College, Cambridge, and a couple of blokes I know down the pub. And hopefully the listeners will know whether your feet are firmly on terra firma or whether you are indeed just a master of your own reality. Gus, are you ready? Yes. Uh, right, question one. Do you actually know how many guitars you own? Um, not really. <laughs> <laughs> give us a ball, but uh, give it to the nearest ten. Yeah, I mean, you know, it's not that many actually, but just because I haven't spread all over, like somewhere in America, some in England, and some back home in Greece, I must have over twenty-five, or probably around thirty. Okay, I, I reckon that's pretty accurate. Yeah. I mean, I don't know, but I'm guessing. But it should be that. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I go on the road with about seven or eight of them. Right. Just on the road, I bring that many, so they're probably like at least twice as many floating around space. <laughs> <laughs> space and time. Yes. All right, question two. I think you'll get a point for that. Uh, question two. If you had 10 euros to change into British pounds today, how much would you get? I think I would get nine pounds. You know, I know you're pretty good with your money and yep. your exchange, so <laughs> I reckon you're pretty right there. Okay, question three. It's kind of a, this is a, a multi-choice answer question. You're late for an interview with Yachting Monthly due to oversleeping. <laughs> Uh, it's a cover shoot, so vitally important to your career. Do you A... On Yachting Monthly? Yachting Monthly. Jesus. Well, you've been on the front of every other bloody magazine, <laughs> so why not Yachting <laughs> Monthly? 
Okay, so here's your choices. A, do you call the interviewer and tell the truth about you needing 14 hours sleep a day? B, turn up two hours late and say you were held up at gunpoint by some super fans at the hotel? Or C, do you call your manager and rearrange it so you can get back to sleep? Yeah, probably C. Probably C. Yes. You wouldn't just make up some bullshit. And... No, I, w- I would just like, hey, you know, I fucked up. I need to, uh, <laughs> I, need, <laughs> I need to reschedule this. I'm, I'm off back to sleep now. <laughs> See ya. <laughs> Right, good. Question four. You're doing well so far. How much is a pint of Guinness on average in London? Now, should I say that? I mean, I don't really know, to be honest, because um, A, <laughs> I don't really drink. And B, when I do go out with friends, um, they usually buy the beers for me. Wow, you got good friends. I need to come out with your friends. <laughs> yeah, here. well, it's either that or if I will buy, like, a beer, I'll just buy... Around. Around, yeah. Okay, so. well, let's, let's alter the question slightly then. If you were to buy... Um, a coffee in Starbucks, roughly how much would it cost? Or a, I should say that other coffee and tea venues are available. Yeah, probably two pounds. That's pretty good, yeah. Yeah. Cool, all right. Question five. I know you are endorsed by Elixir guitar strings. If you had to buy your own set, how much would they cost? One American dollar. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just quoting a good friend of mine. <laughs> you might know who he is, but uh, yeah. Um, strings are strings, I don't know. And actually, you know what? Elixir strings are pretty expensive. Right. Because they're really high-end strings. And um, it's funny because when I started working with them, they told me, um, we'd love to endorse you and all that, but we really need to make sure you really are into the strings. They're just like their policy, and I really appreciated that. So mm. they're like, okay, so what do you suggest? They're like, okay, go out, buy a pack of strings, try them on, and if you like them, we'll hook you up with whatever you like. And then I'm like, okay, cool. You know, usually there would be like, I don't know, strings cost maybe 10 pounds up there, I don't know, like eight pounds, whatever, or back then. Um, And then (laughs) I went out and these were like three times as much. It was like 30 euro or something. I'm like, is this guy kidding me? (laughs) But uh, yeah. So just as well you liked them then? I really liked them, yeah. Well, do you know, I think it's five out of five so far. One last question. Okay. Do you know the city, well, let's make it a bit easier, the country, at the first two shows we're playing with Ozzy in August. Yes, of course. Or the f- the first show. Give me the first two. Okay, the first one is Germany, in Wacken, and the second one is Norway, Oslo. Wow, I'm following you to the airport. That's for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I had no idea. That's six out of six. What can I say, Gus? You I'm are a genius. You are a genius. You uh, yes. are not just a master of your own reality. Your feet are well and truly on terra firma. Thank you. You're Thank you very much. So, what, what's next for you, man? What's next for the rest of the year? Um, I'm, I'll be doing once we finish up in August. Uh, I'll just take a short break and then uh, go back out on tour. Actually, in September with uh, Firewind. We're going to be doing a, a European tour in September and an American tour in October. Actually, we're going to be doing a. Um, four shows over the UK. We're going to be playing some pretty um, intimate um, shows and uh, hitting um, markets we don't really play that often like Southampton and Reading and um, well Glasgow we, we play there often. So yeah hopefully I'll uh, get to hang out with you. Yeah some, we'll sometime be there. I'll, I'll bring some of the fellow Headspace guys down and we'll heckle you from the sides. That would be amazing. <laughs> and uh, what's your website address mate? So people can- well, they can check out all uh, news on Firewind on um, firewind.gr. My website is gusgofficial.com. They can find me also on Twitter, twitter.com slash gusgofficial. And um, that's it. Cool, man. Listen, thanks a lot for talking to me. And Thank you, Adam. I'll see you in about five minutes' time. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> Cheers, mate. Cheers. Thanks a lot there to Gus G. Gave me a bit of his valuable time uh, back uh, a couple of weeks back. Um, that was a track called World on Fire from uh, the Days of Defiance album, the Firewind album. And uh, there'll be another guest next time we're back, if of course they let us back. And here's some ads. Pressure and Time, the stunning new album.
that was Blind House by Porcupine Tree. Before that, Sane Life by us, Rich, wasn't it? Sane Life indeed, from our first EP, I Am, which we wrote and recorded in a mansion in sunny Wales. Yeah, a few years back now. Uh, what's next, my friend? I think maybe a bit of Opeth. That's not a bad idea. <laughs> The true voice of rock and metal, now with the freedom to roam. The true voice of rock and metal, Total Rock. Well, that was Window Pane by Opeth from the album Damnation. Uh, now we're into the strictly commercial hour, we like to call it, um, which is where we're going to play a few tunes that have absolutely no place on commercial radio. Well, we have absolutely no place on commercial radio either, so we can play what we like. This is Knife Edge by ELP. <laughs> I'm sure. <laughs> totally. It was Knife Edge by ELP, Valley Girl from the late Frank Zappa, not Frank Sinatra as I thought it was earlier, uh, and Hocus Pocus by Focus. Also a strange name of band after a car, weird, very strange. Um, interesting thing about Frank Zappa is he used to have his band uh, rehearse and be prepared for his entire back catalogue apparently, so he would just call tunes out on the, uh, on the gig, never had the same set list. Very cool. The Total Rock merch store is open. Find the Real from Alterbridge. I met singer Miles, uh, I think it's Miles Kennedy from Alterbridge a few times on the last leg of the Aussie tour. He was singing with Slash's band that are opening for us. Really nice bloke, actually, and uh, a pretty wicked voice. So, this is the point in the show where we would like you to indulge us a little bit by letting us play you the first track from the new Headspace album, I Am Anonymous. The album has been, what, about two years in the writing and recording, I think? I think it's been close to three years, actually. Three years? Really? Uh, I'm afraid so. I know builders that have finished extensions in less time. Mm. Uh, the album's due out in January. Uh, this is basically the first play anywhere in the world. We got the Masters back um, this afternoon from Jens Borgren, who uh, mixed and mastered the album over there in Sweden. Did a pretty. In fact, he, I think he did the Opeth album as well. Didn't he did he? Yeah. The tune played earlier. Uh, it did a fantastic job. Anyway, here is the track. I'm going to not try and talk all over the uh, open of it, but uh, this is stalled Armageddon. Headspace production for Total Rock Radio. We'll be back on Saturday, 3rd of September. When it'll be myself and Headspace vocalist Damien Wilson hosting the show. And then hopefully the first Saturday in every month, assuming of course that they let us back. He was waiting for the evening express. Once again, I uh, hope you've enjoyed it. We've had a pretty good laugh. Uh, Rich, I believe before we go, you do have an announcement. Very quick one. Uh, please can everyone be aware that Judgment Day has been moved to the 21st of October simply because the one at the end of May simply didn't happen. This will not, however, incorporate another bank holiday into the year. Thanks for listening. Mm-hmm.